Andrew Collins. Six Music. Hello. Andrew Collins here. Ah, deep breath. It's going to be a good day today if you love The Cure, or if you're interested in The Cure from a kind of outsider's perspective. Because we have David M. Allen, long-time producer of The Cure, with particular interest in Disintegration, which is coming out, has come out, in a deluxe edition. I've asked for questions from Cure fans, and we have about mm, three or four hundred, <laughs> some of which are interesting. I.e. interesting to those who aren't absolutely obsessed with The Cure. But I suspect Dave Allen will have lovely things to say and we can ask him all about the fire in the studio that occurred before they even started recording the album. Uh, now then, since uh, David M. Allen is coming in later on to talk about the making of Disintegration by The Cure and other Cure-related matters and other production-related matters, uh, I thought it might be a good time for you to email in and tell us if you've ever modelled yourself on a pop star. Because I really, really wanted to be Robert Smith, I modelled my hair on his and uh, he knows about it because I interviewed Robert Smith a couple of times and uh, he knows who I am. He knows I was one of those people and I think he's secretly flattered. After all, he's modelled himself on Robert Smith uh, for many, many years after most of us stopped. Uh, so he can't possibly mind if others did it when we were impressionable teenagers. On digital radio and online, BBC Six Music. Now, I promised you... Dave Allen, I have him here with me now. Hello, Dave. Hi, how are you? Very nice to see you here, actually. I'm very pleased to have you here. And not just because I'm a Cure fan. Uh, you've obviously worked with many bands apart from The Cure, uh, but they kind of ruled your life for a few years, didn't they? They certainly did, yeah. in, in a good and bad way, is my guess. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, so uh, the top uh, Cure fans will know this already, and we know there are lots of Cure fans listening because they've sent in questions for you, mm. uh, some of which I suspect may be too dry uh, for an entertaining interview like this is... Intended well, for a to wet be. band like The Cure, that's... Uh... <laughs> In fact, I'm going to... Uh, this top one, you said I was going to use this to illustrate uh, the potential dryness of some of the questions. Mm. Obviously, uh, you know, they know that you know stuff yeah. uh, that other people can't say. And Ryan Wynn uh, emailed in and said, how were the six-string basses recorded on Disintegration, uh, which is coming out in this deluxe edition next week? How were the six-string basses recorded, Dave? Uh, with great difficulty. Right, there you yeah. see. So we have answered it for you, uh, Ryan. Mm. Although... Uh, uh, I did say to you before off air that mm. it's interesting because uh, in the sequel to Disintegration Wish, we did have a big mm, face off of six string basses to find out which one sounded the best. Right. And actually, although we had six in the studio at the time, the one that sounded best was Robert's, which when we took it apart to look at the electronics, it all been wired up wrongly. Oh, really? So all the six string basses are the same bass guitar, even though there were lots of options because uh, some are special. And being wired up incorrectly is not a bad way to. Make we it never special. changed the wiring to make no. it correct. No, because um, why spoil? And why spoil why something spoil that's a marvelous thing? Yeah. yeah. Uh, there are lots of other questions about reverb and consoles and delay, uh, which we might just uh, politely put to one side for now, uh, because uh, the story of this album is told in quite a lot of detail mm. uh, in long series of interviews with Robert Smith in this, uh, the packaging of the Deluxe Edition, yeah. which also includes really early demos, demos that he did on his own, and then uh, demos the band did together around Boris Williams, the drummer's house in yeah. Devon. And then they hooked up with you uh, at Hook End Manor, mm. yeah, just outside Reading, isn't it? And uh, the reason that that studio was chosen, or at least according to Robert's uh, view of it, was that it has a very big control room, so a lot of people can get in there. It does have a very big control room, now, yeah. from your point of view, is it a good thing to have a lot of people in there? Well, I went through um, four sets of NS10 monitors before I realised that uh, you can't have little near-field speakers sounding loud in a big room. Right. Uh, the moment I'd got that out of the way, uh, it was all fine. OK, and what yeah, about... You the... can't mix there. Yeah, and the amount of people in there, does that bother you? Would you rather, you know... It's nicer to have a party. Is it? Yeah, of course that, it is. That's good to hear. Because, uh, and... of course, the most sombre bands are usually the most fun to work with, because... Yeah. Uh, it's called catharsis. Once you're putting it all into the music, you have plenty of time to be amusing. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, have, having met uh, various members of The Cure over the years, they are not uh, 
dour men. Mm. Robert Smith is not a dour man at all, no, as no. you will know. Uh, and uh, it, it's a lot interesting. And the very early demos, in fact, one of the ones we were going to play in a moment, uh, which is one from Boris Williams' house, you can hear the band laughing on there. And, and Robert said in the interview with the, in the <laughs> sleeve notes that he was surprised how much they sounded like they're having a good time, even at the beginning, because yeah. you know, he was, I think he just turned 30, or was just about to turn 30, which is a difficult oh, time for anyone. Oh, a difficult time, yeah, that is. <laughs> and yeah. uh, he seemed quite miserable uh, about that fact. And uh, also, They are reprising the Trogs tape. That's interesting to hear at that. At the start well. of that, yeah. uh, you're yeah. doing it all wrong. You're doing it wrong. And you can hear that in there, which mm. is quite sweet. Uh, so, uh, Hook End Manor, uh, before you'd even done a single note of recording, I think I'm right in saying, there was a fire. Mm. Tell us about this fire, because it was in the living quarters rather than the studio, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, well... According to Robert's notes, it was on the first night. Well, I certainly don't remember that. It was probably in the first week. Um, yeah, it was an interesting moment in time. Maybe we should come back to that a little bit later on when I've warmed up. <laughs> really? Okay, yeah, well, well, I noticed your literally. fire. I was, like, looking out in the reception area, and if there's a fire in here, you have to dial 666. Yes, that's good, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's not a misprint for 999. You no, actually no. have to dial the number of the beast. Well, you have to dial mm. the devil uh, to come and put the fire mm. out. Yeah, that's how yeah. it works here at the BBC. Uh, so uh, one thing about this album, which I discovered and not really thought about at the time, uh, because it came out in 1989, was it was the first Cure album, uh, and you worked on a number before this, which was actually recorded for CD, or were thinking along the lines of how much you could get onto a CD, which was obviously... Yeah, I guess you know, so, yeah. Uh, reasonable. And in fact, there were two tracks that weren't on the vinyl version, but mm. were on the CD, so the full version appeared on CD. So there's more music on it mm. than the other Cure albums that you worked on. Well, that was the same. The album before, Kiss Me, Kiss Me, Kiss Me, was a double album, uh, yeah. but a single CD. Yeah. So, uh, uh, minus one track, I believe. Yeah. So this issue had been going for some kind of time. Mm. So uh, I'm going to play a track from the band rehearsal, which was before Dave Allen got there, uh, just mm. for the record. But you can hear a bit of the, uh, the Trogs take mucking about and uh, a bit of laughter on the beginning of this. This is Homesick, which did actually make the finished album Disintegration. <laughs>
Cure, the band rehearsal version of Homesick, part of the disintegration sessions, and you could hear a little bit of uh, the Trogs tape being parroted there at the beginning by a band. Sound like they're having a good time, uh, and we're doing that mainly on Scrumpy, according to Robert Smith's sleep notes <laughs> of the deluxe edition. Dave Allen, a uh, long-time producer and confidant of the band, is here. And uh, this was the album, of course, where Lowell Tolhurst was finally dispatched um, mm. and was, I think he was credited, wasn't he, on there, but didn't actually play anything on the Other record. instrument? Yeah. So, uh, from your side, how, how was that relationship between the rest of the band and LOL? Had it just completely disintegrated? Well, it? Homesick was... Uh, I found the track sheet the other day um, in the... Where there's a hit, there's a writ file, hmm. because there was a court case re-Robert and LOL's business arrangements, which I unfortunately got involved in because uh, LOL in his deposition had said that he'd done quite a lot of things that actually I'd done. Right. So, although I was reluctant to get involved in the spat, I did have to, because obviously you don't want other people claiming that they've done what you've done. No, of course not. But I laughed when I found the track sheet for Homesick, because it was called... Um, the working title was The Unknown Badger. Right. <laughs> which I believe was a reference to a badger that Bruno, or Billy Bongo, the Cures technician, was very upset to find... Um, deadline by the side of the road while they were down in Devon so they called it the unknown badger and I, I feel that in banjo it was that Bruno had sexually abused the badger to death you know right. in some sort of thing like that so the unknown badger was what that was originally called right bands are funny people aren't they you get this extremely <laughs> internalized sense of humor yeah yeah uh, not that he had of course uh, in case he's oh, obviously, obviously not yeah, obviously, obviously not. a ridiculous concept of course uh, so they moved from Devon uh, out to Berkshire or Berkshire mm. and uh, Robert seemed to uh, in according to his own account, sort of disappear into himself and sort of become uh, kind of detached from the rest of the band because he felt that was better for the kind of creative process. Now, how did that sort of impact upon your job? Um, well, he seemed to be about as present as he usually was right. to me. I, I wasn't aware that he was reclusing off, other than obviously once he'd lost his room, hmm. um, he did have to go off into another room that wasn't anywhere near as posh as the one that he had. Right. So <laughs> there is a hierarchy. <laughs> well, there would be, Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And how big was your room? Uh, I never stayed. Oh, really? So you actually retreated back to the real world? Yeah, but used to generally drive off back home at right. about five or six in the morning and yeah. uh, just before rush hour and yeah. make it back the following day for about 12 or 1. I don't really like residential studios. Right. It becomes too enclosed. Um, if you spend three months with a band, it's almost impossible for you not to get drawn into the antics and mm. other sort of things. You, know, you do need to sort of have some kind of exterior viewpoint. Yeah, and your job is really to, to interpret or to make the best sound of their ideas. You're the really, first yeah. fan, aren't you? Yeah, and you are a fan, obviously. Oh, I am, totally, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and how different was it making Wish, which was the next album? Because uh, uh, Disintegration was a huge seller. I think it still is the biggest selling mm. Pure record. Gave them their biggest hit in America, number two hit with Love Song, a biggest hit here as well. It was huge. And so there was a lot more expectation on Wish... Um, was I, it, was did, I didn't mix Wish. Oh, you didn't mix it, right. No. Okay. So that's the probably the crucial difference. In fact, when I was going through my old DAT tapes, uh, I did discover there's a complete other entire version that I did mix when, right. I, le when I left it. Mainly because I just... Uh, it was a pragmatic decision, really, that uh, given the rate of progress of recording, because it was designed to be like a, an album of songs and an album of backing, uh, backing tracks, instrumentals, sorry... Um, which uh, I just could never see that we would get it finished in time for them to go on tour, hit the American circuit and mm. all the other stuff that bands have to do. Yeah. So uh, quite early on in October during the recording of Wish, I suggested that they find somebody else to mix it. Okay. And really disintegration, I think, as a sort of creative working agreement between or working relationship between me and Robert w was probably broken by disintegration. OK, so that was kind of the last one that you absolutely saw from one end to the other. Yeah, as far as you're totally, concerned. yeah. Okay. Well, let's play uh, what we've done here, and I'm, I'm mm. almost embarrassed to tell you this. We've kind of mixed uh, a kind of uh, rehearsal version of Lullaby into the actual finished item. Let's uh, Don't listen too harshly on this, Dave, because we're, okay. we're not professionals or anything. <laughs>
from Disintegration, our biggest hit in this country, Dave Allen, who is there producing it. Um, a lot of people have asked uh, Cure fans if you'd work with The Cure again, Dave. Yes yeah. or no? Well, of course, why not? Yeah. yeah. I suppose they're kind of wondering if you fell out with them. Obviously, you didn't. No, not at all. No. No. That's, that's good to know. I'm pleased about that. And uh, can we do the fire? Yeah, totally. Because in yeah. the story, the official version, let's say, mm. <laughs> that has gone before the court, Robert Smith uh, says that he had to go back in with the tower and on his head to say the satchel of lyrics, handwritten lyrics. Uh, it sounds like an intrepid kind of diehard situation. Uh, you were there. Mm. Did he go in on his own and save them? No. <laughs> what happened? Uh, I went in and saved them. I wondered if you might say that. Yeah. Well, well done. <laughs> You should, oh. have written, you should have written the sleeve notes. I should have done, but um, to be perfectly honest, I don't really come out of it too well either because uh, I did it for a, the reason that I'd waited six weeks for him to write the lyrics on the previous album, mm. hanging around in Miraval, and uh, I just thought, no, I'm not doing that. <laughs> you need those lyrics now. I, it looked doable to me. Mm. There was smoke down to a foot mm. above the floor. Um, all the fire extinguishers had been used. Uh, fire brigade was about to turn up. Where are they, Robert? Where are they? And everybody knows me knows I'm easily mad enough to do that. And you did. And I've always believed in fire walking after that because I had not a single burn. When I pulled the satchel out of the room and dropped it on the ground, it burst into flames. Really? Yeah. Wow. Your magic. Something. <laughs> you are Please well. tell me I'm Darren Brown, not Paul Daniels. <laughs> you are definitely more Darren Brown than Paul Daniels, but cooler than him as well. Uh, well, look, it's been brilliant having you in, Dave. Thank you so much for coming. It's really nice no to talk problem. to somebody who's actually kind of there. Uh, we often talk to bands, not enough uh, to producers, although mm. uh, the record producer series that Steve Levine and Richard Anderson have been doing on two and six has given us loads of insight into stuff. I'm sure uh, there should be one on you. There should be. There should be. There you go. <laughs> uh, I Steve Levine's in the building. We'll try, try and put, hook you up because I would <laughs> love to hear. Though. Love to hear some some your tales from doing not just the Cure mm. but all the other bands as well. Anyway, thank you so much for coming in. Uh, the album, the deluxe edition, if you're a Cure fan, you have to have it. Is out on the 24th of May. Uh, of course, sleeve notes. Take them all with a pinch of salt, <laughs> especially the fire <laughs> story. <laughs> thank you, Dave. My trembling hand crept out. <laughs> <laughs>